Thank you for having me with you this evening. My name is Dan Dujardin, and I'd like to tell a very personal story about how a single letter was able to annihilate a 20-year journey and force a pretty important renegotiation of identity. I'd also like to share a few lessons that were learned along the way about how you can revive, and more importantly, how each and every one of us can help others revive. Have you ever invested so much into a long-term pursuit that you had become intertwined in it, maybe a bit too much, and that suddenly the red carpet was pulled from underneath your feet? You met a dead end. How did you get back up? Did you do it alone, or did you get help? Is there someone in your life right now that's going through something similar? How are you encouraging them? I went to school and grew up on uh, the Gaspé coast in a small Anglophone town called New Carlisle. Um, I spoke English at home with the parents and was sent, therefore, to French kindergarten in a next, town, next door uh, Francophone town. But I had a problem. I could only understand and speak about half of French words, so it was incredibly isolating and I couldn't communicate. And kindergarten, as we all know, is where friend circles are established for the first time and the social pecking order is determined for years to follow. So as an English kid in a French school, it should be no surprise that I did not make any friends and I was rejected and bullied relentlessly. So to survive, I had to develop an inside voice, one that I could listen to and depend on, because listening to any of the other kids' voice was tremendously hurtful and destructive. So that was the first important childhood lesson, which was know and believe in your own worth. Don't let anyone else determine it for you. Despite the eight years of bullying and harassment that followed, home was a psychologically safe space. And I owe this all to my parents, who provided unconditional love and support. Their love and support allowed me to transform those eight years of misery into a hard-earned, deep, iron core resilience. I could literally hear the voice inside my head, not one of self-pity, but one whispering, you're going to show them one day. And that voice, combined with a hardened work ethic, it fanned a flame, a fire in the heart that burned bright in the winds of adversity. But I want to make a note here, that superpower, that voice that allows you to truck through barriers, it didn't come out of nowhere. It came from genuine love and support from friends and family. And so the lesson here is that genuine love and encouragement that we afford others is what allows them to transform adversity into resilience and courage. So be a good parent and be a good friend. Five years of focused work later, I went to high school and I asked Cheryl, and this of course is after age 11 catching a show called On the Nature of Things, called Escape from Earth. It covered a hypothetical space mission where people boldly went to planets around a distant solar system using future technologies that hadn't been developed yet. My 11-year-old mind was blown, and from that moment, that's when I wanted to be an astronaut. The, the very idea of exploring interstellar space with its billions of stars and trillions of planets was utterly intoxicating. There was endless discovery and exploration possible, which was endlessly exciting. But of course, I couldn't tell anyone at school because I'd be laughed at. So quietly, I set on to learn and read everything I could what did astronauts read? What did they study in school? What did they eat? What languages they spoke? Everything. So despite school life, I was on a secret mission and I wouldn't be deterred. So the lesson here, listen to your heart and dare to dream big dreams. Going back to high school, this is the first time I was going to talk about this outside of the family household. I asked to meet with a career advisor. I asked with a bit of a smirk, because I'd read everything about this and I thought I had it all figured out. I want to be an astronaut. How do you suppose I go about doing that? And without skipping a beat, she opened up a booklet on the Royal Military College of Canada saying, well, two astronauts went through this program and uh, joined the Canadian Space Program. I was humbled because I thought I had it all figured out. Humbled and I took the advice, but mostly I was taken aback. I was taken aback because she had taken me seriously. 
And so the lesson here is, when talking to others, take their dreams seriously, for that will empower them. From that moment on, uh, life and uh, every single moment spent was driving towards this, this goal. It was a 20-year journey in the making. And of course, in, in 2016, that's when the astronaut campaign was announced. And so I was going to throw my, my name in the hat. You know, this was years in the making. I'd invested so much of my identity into this pursuit at this point. And I gave a bit of a spoiler at the start of this talk, so we know how the story ends. But it's about question 71 of 103 in the medical questionnaire where they asked if I had trouble sleeping. Everything else was fine. But that's where I said, well, I occasionally sleepwalk. And that was it. The rejection letter would soon follow, and it was more than gut-wrenching. So this was um, a three-paragraph letter that, poof, annihilated um, a 20-year dream. So I accepted the, the outcome with no regrets, and if I were to go back again, I wouldn't change any of my results. But I now felt completely aimless. Not lost, I knew exactly who I was and where I was, but directionless. After all, I had a guiding North Star and uh, a guiding purpose for 20 years, and it just disappeared. So that's the negotiation, the renegotiation of identity that I wanted to talk about. Um, here's the key insight. Rather than immediately launch into a panicked search to fill that void, reclaim identity, instead, I just left it sit. I maintained a meta-awareness of this feeling of aimlessness because those feelings had to play out. It was okay to be without aim for a moment, to rest. It was okay to drift, to give myself permission to drift with awareness for a while. Several weeks later, uh, unexpected and unsought, a friend was starting a tech startup here in Kingston and said, come join. And I said, count me in. On a personal note, I had never been exposed to business or entrepreneurship. It was a brand new horizon, a fresh space, pun intended. Um, and so along we went. This company has now, five years later, grown to 40 of the smartest and most creative people you could ever meet. And we're building some pretty cutting edge distributed computing technology, which we're putting out into the world, especially into academia, no cost, because we want to enable exploration and innovation for everyone. So the lesson here was, after you've fallen and given yourself permission to rest, embrace the reset and set goals anew. And thus, the story and the cycle repeats, but a little differently this time. Life is a series of seasons. In one season, everything's going well. You're executing your perfect plan. You're setting bold and ambitious goals. You're enjoying the work. You believe in your worth, not letting anyone else determine it for you. That voice that you've been cultivating, that superpower that whispers, you got this, is a powerful source of resilience and a powerful agent of courage. But know that the colors of the leaves can change and a new season sets in. The transition can be dramatic and sometimes traumatic. When you fall, stop, pause, and breathe. When you take the time to breathe and reset yourself, this is where the balance is restored and you're able to find and reconnect with things that are important. The future will always be your playground. And by now, you've developed a skill or two or 10 and many beautiful relationships. Opportunities will abound in one form or another and you will recognize them. Embrace the reset. You are now more powerful, more confident, more wise than the first time through. And when you get back up, know that there are great, great many people you need to thank for having helped you back up. Nobody, nobody recovers from failure and develops resilience in a complete vacuum. And so here's the key insight. 
It is precisely our words of encouragement that help others believe in themselves. And that's where the magic truly begins. Who will you encourage tomorrow? Thank you.